Xin chào, what's up everybody? All right, in this video today, we are gonna talk about a tourist guide to love on Netflix. So it's a pretty new popular movie on Netflix and it's pretty much a, a white lady from America comes on a tour guide to Vietnam. And we're gonna talk about what I thought about the movie, the accuracies inside the movie, and the things that weren't accurate at all. So overall, the movie was, eh, it was okay. It wasn't like crazy good, but like, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It's a love story. I liked it for its nice filmography of Vietnam. They did a pretty good job covering some important cultural things here. Uh, they, they did a really good job with tech. I found it to be a very nice love note to Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is one of the top travel tourist destinations in the next two years. You know, everybody's Thailand this, Thailand that, Thailand this. Oh, it's better. I can stay there for as long as I want and blah, 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 blah. The truth of the matter is they're two totally different countries. Absolutely couldn't be more different. Sure, they're next to each other, but they're significantly different. So if you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about the movie. Uh, I would recommend that you watch the movie first before you listen to me talk all about the plot and everything that happens in the movie, which I'm about to do now. So if you have not seen the movie, it's called A Tourist Guide to Love. It's on Netflix. I think it's in the top 10 movies worldwide right now. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. So essentially it's about a lady from America that works at a tour company. They're trying to buy a tour company in Vietnam because they see that it's gonna be a real hot tourist destination place. So she's assigned to go a uh, secret shop at a tour company that they wanna buy. Long story short, she falls in love with the Vietnamese tour guy who's like got a six pack and a super good looking dude. Good actor. He is a good looking guy. Definitely a Viet Q. I don't think he's Vietnamese, like born and raised in Vietnam. I'm talking in real life. His English is pretty much American, so I think he's a, a, a Vietnamese born American. Well, he came over when he was a young kid. So the premise and the bones of the movie is like many of a love story. She breaks up with her boyfriend just before she goes, falls in love with the new guy, loses the guy towards then when he finds out what's going on, and she gets him back. I mean, it's how many times have we seen that exact plot in the movie? Well, about 400, so. Nothing new plot-wise, but they did do a really good job of listing off tourist areas and things to do. Now the first problem I had, not problem, is they just stuck to like, let's go to the cathedral, let's go to the post office, let's go to Win Way. There is no mention of going to any of like the popular food streets and like the key market. And you know, the, the video I did, the top five things you should do when you come to Saigon for the first time, I think did a better portrayal of Ho Chi Minh City than the movie did. They really stuck to the main, main points. And the, <laughs> The other thing I found extremely funny is you won't find a speck of garbage in one scene. And it's shot like on location. It's shot in Saigon, shot in Da Nang. It's shot in uh, Hoi An. It's shot in all the real destinations. And I was laughing my ass off halfway through the movie when I'm like, where's all the garbage? So they cleaned up the garbage for every shot. Definitely the Vietnamese government had a part in that for sure. Because they don't want their country to be portrayed as dirty. I wouldn't either, to be honest with you. Like, so I don't have a problem with that. They cleaned up all the trash for every shot in the movie, but it did make me laugh like quite a bit when I'm like, where's the trash? Like they'd be walking down an alley in Saigon and you could, you would struggle to find even a, a little piece of trash. So that I found to be extremely inaccurate, but understandable for the movie. So another thing they did is they said they took a bus from Saigon to Da Nang. I don't know if you know how far that is, but that is around an 18 hour bus ride. And it was in a seating bus, not a sleeper bus, like a little seating bus. So I had a chuckle at that too. You're definitely not gonna take a bus from Saigon to Da Nang. It's never gonna happen. Completely unrealistic in almost all ways. So, I mean, it's a movie, so you kind of gotta roll with it, but you're definitely not taking a bus, especially a sitting bus 
from Saigon to Da Nang. And then when they got to Da Nang, I don't know when they filmed it. I think they filmed this movie when Banana Hills might have been closed still. Because they come up with this clever excuse. They're like, well, we can go up the cable car and go to the Hands Bridge, but it's going to be a three-hour wait. And then the Vietnamese tour guide's like, but I got something better. And he takes him to, like, some ancient ruins guide, like, ancient ruins little area, which I had never heard of. I'm sure it is really there, but, I mean, not better than the Hands Bridge and not better than the cable car. Is the Hands Bridge Banana Hills cable car worth a three-hour wait? Oh, boy, I don't know. That's super debatable for me. I think if you're only going to come to Vietnam once and it's on your list of shit to see, it's worth the wait. If you know you're going to come back to Vietnam, maybe go to Da Nang in the off season, and then there's no wait. We had a zero minute wait when we took the cable car. Now, as far as Banana Hills go, so what I'm talking about, if you don't understand, is there's a cable car, and the cable car takes you up the mountain, and it stops at the hand bridge, which is like before Banana Hills. Banana Hills is a, a children's amusement park. And for me, I thought it was a waste of time and money. I wouldn't buy the buffet up there. I wouldn't spend really too much time at all on Banana Hills. Maybe a quick walk around. It's definitely expensive. You're gonna blow some money there. But I, I would do a quick walk around. I wouldn't plan a lot of time up there. The main thing is the cable car itself. There's some good views on Banana Hills, sure. And then the, the hands bridge. You know, I was fortunate enough to be able to fly a drone there. It's pretty hard to fly a drone there now. So, we got some really good footage if you want to see it. I, think, I don't even know what the video is called. Just type in Da Nang Fat and Bro. It should show up. And then they went to Hoi An as well. And they did a pretty good job with Hoi An. Uh, representing the old town. He talked about the Japanese bridge. How they put it in for trading. The Japanese did. It's the wooden bridge, the little one. You can see that in my Hoi An video. So, they did pretty pretty good on a lot of stuff and that's one of the things they did a pretty good job on. Is I'm just some, somebody oh no the TV station HTV it's a big 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 TV station so they did a really good job on Hoi An you know they did the little round boat tour at night you know fired off the little candle lantern thing into the water and uh, they got clothes made which I think is like the biggest thing in Hoi An to do You'd be crazy not to get some clothes made when you're in Hoi An. I wish, when I do go back to Da Nang, I'm gonna go to Hoi An and get like 20 shirts made because they were really good quality and they're perfectly tailored to your body. So if, you, if you're if a weird guy like me and you got fat tits and a big belly and <laughs> a, a longer torso, it's a great place. Like I can get clothes here at H&M, but like the torso is never long enough. It's too short. so. This, uh, they're not long enough. Hold on, I gotta adjust this. I got rocks in my shoe. One second. Some dickhead driving his car way too fast after it rained. Splashed water on me and like three other people walking. Like, I've never had that happen here. I was like, what in the... I was pissed. But yeah, it's not that big a deal. The clothes can be washed. I do have white shorts on, but what else? What else? So they did some really good accuracies on on Hoi An, on Da Nang. They also did uh, a pretty good job with Hanoi too. Hanoi, they didn't do much in though. The things I didn't like is they spent way more time, unlike this Tet segment in a town nobody's heard of. It was some village that kind of looked like Sapa, had a lot of rice fields, a little mountainous. I forget the name of it. But the part about the Tet segment that was interesting is I learned a lot of intricacies about actual Tet in Vietnam that I didn't even know from my wife. So there was a bit of a... Put your uh, kickstand up, girl. It's not going to turn up. So I did learn a bit of... Oh, yeah. Le Monde Steak. Beef steak. The steaks... Only six dollars. I promise you it's not gonna be a good steak. I can almost assure you of this. So just know, even in Vietnam, a six dollar steak is way too little. 
So, overall, I really like the movie. I thought they did a good job. I do recommend you watch it, especially if you like really like Vietnam. It definitely showcases a bunch of stuff that I found to be pretty cool to me. And the filmography is done very well. And for the most part, the acting's pretty good. Um, they got a Vietnamese girl that's like the main guy's cousin. She's cute. She's got like pink hair. I don't know if she's famous or not. I watched it without Win. I told her to watch it on her own. She was sleeping already. And I was bored. There's nothing else to watch. Let's go down here. Might as well walk around new areas. Everybody always wants to see new things. So there you go. New things. Never filmed here before. We are in District 1. And we're over in a different area. This, is, this apartment in front of us is the Mark. This big new one. The problem with the Mark is it's just costing much. Their prices are insane. They want like $1,600 for an empty two bedroom low floor. They want like $1,200 for a one bedroom and they're smaller. They're not even bigger than, and you can see, I'll show you. Look how little occupied they are. You've got one, two, three, four. I can count on two hands that there's 10 apartments just on this side out of who knows, maybe 80 or 100 we're looking at. So I mean, it's even worse off than how Golden River was when it first came out. Because Golden River was obscenely overpriced when they first came out for renting. And debatable if it's still overpriced because rent is starting to sort of drop in Golden River. But let's not get off on a tangent on something else. We're talking about the movie. So really, the, the only parts that they skipped is you're not gonna be taking a tour bus all across the country. That's a for sure. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but you're gonna be you're talking about wasting days of time being in a bus. So it's just not gonna be feasible for most tourists unless they're like old and retired. <coughs> so yeah, that's my synopsis of the movie. Let me know if you've seen the movie in the comment section. My overall score for the movie, I would give it a 7.1. I just don't like, you know, those cheesy style romance things. So yeah, that's the video. Of course, if you want to do a private tour with me, you can sign up for the Patreon. We just did one this weekend. It was pretty wild. <laughs> It'll definitely be something you can talk about for a lifetime, if you get what I'm saying. So, and, and yeah, we can do all kinds of different tours. I've got a, a day food tour coming up this week. So we do all kinds of different stuff. So as ever, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Stay frosty. Peace out.